Some of America's best kept secrets are out. By now, most of the world has heard of Edward Snowden, the former National Security Agency contractor who released thousands of classified documents about government surveillance. They are some of the most significant leaks in US history. Snowden has been charged with espionage and has been living in Russia under temporary asylum. The American journalist at the center of the story lives in Brazil. We had to come to Rio to speak to Glenn Greenwald. He's been reluctant to return to the US after he broke the story about the global surveillance system for fear of being prosecuted. Interestingly, the goals of the NSA are most easily understood by the NSA's own descriptions of those goals. We're used to discounting what government officials or agencies say because typically they're propagandistic or misleading in some way, but in this case we have access to what they were saying not publicly but in secret, which is a much more reliable form of statement. And their motto, the way that corporations have mottos or um, advertising agencies create mottos for campaigns, they had their own motto to summarize their institutional objective and that motto is collect it all not you know, collect a lot of it or collect most of it or collect the terrorist communications. It's collect it all and that really is very accurate about what their mindset is, which is their goal is literally to collect and store essentially the entire internet, all forms of human communication and human activity in the digital age, which is really another way of saying their goal is to eliminate privacy um, in the digital world. In December 2012, Glenn Greenwald received an email from a person who didn't identify himself. You know, as a journalist, you get emails all the time from people making all sorts of spectacular claims, most of which end up being fantasy or paranoia or um, some form of mental illness or just boredom. And so there's a part of you as a journalist that when someone starts contacting you claiming to have this massive story or this huge cache of information that they want to give you, you're obviously very skeptical about it. And in this case, um, when I was being contacted by this anonymous source, um, he was insistent that I implement this entire regimen of security protocols prior to his being able to tell me what it is that he wanted or had. Um, and so if you can imagine you're a busy journalist, you're getting contacted all the time with people making all sorts of extreme claims, when someone suddenly pops up in your email inbox and doesn't just make extreme claims, but demands that you stop what you're doing and, and start you know, implementing very sophisticated forms of encryption, a part of you thinks, okay, I'll get to this, but it's not gonna be my priority because you can't you know, spend days or, or weeks implementing a system to accommodate someone who you don't know, who's never identified themselves and who you have no idea whether they're real. And so we kind of played this back and forth game for um, a couple of months where I wanted some information from him to prove that he was worthwhile. And before he would give me information, he wanted me to install security protocols because as we all now know, but he knew at the time, um, it's very dangerous to speak over unencrypted channels and he was petrified for good reason that if he talked to me in any way about who he was or what he had without the protection of encryption that he would get caught. The source was Edward Snowden. Yeah, I had been writing about surveillance for several years and we had seen little bits and pieces here and there about the magnitude and scope of the surveillance system the United States government had implemented secretly. But almost all of it was hidden behind a wall of secrecy. So as a journalist, as, as somebody who talks about privacy, it was very difficult to write about it because there was so little that you could find out factually. And so when all of a sudden in my hands I was holding extremely sensitive top secret documents from what is probably the most secretive agency within the most powerful government on the planet, it was breathtaking and exciting and exhilarating and a little bit frightening um, and difficult to breathe all at once because 
I realized that the wall had cracked a little bit and that there was a t potential to blow a huge hole in that wall so that you can see what's actually going on on the other side of it. As Edward Snowden stated in his first ever public appearance, the NSA specifically targets the communications of everyone. It ingests them by default. It collects them in its system and it filters them and it analyzes them and it measures them and it stores them. Up to that point, General Clapper, the director of national intelligence who oversees nearly 20 US intelligence agencies, had been telling the public a different story. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not? Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently, perhaps, uh, collect, but not, not wittingly. After the Snowden revelations, Clapper apologized, explaining that he had given the least untruthful answer. As Snowden stated, I, sitting on my desk, certainly had the authorities to wiretap anyone, from you or your accountant to a federal judge or even the president, if I had a personal email. Enormous numbers of Google searches and browsing histories and buddy lists and emails and telephone calls um, are simply stored from around the world, billions and billions and billions added to this database every single month that are searchable and that are easily read and, and invaded at any time by the NSA with very little legal or regulatory restrictions. What's ultimately the most stunning is the fact that the NSA had ad adopted as its institutional objective um, the collection of all digital information and communications by and between other human beings and every individual story is simply an expression of this institutional goal to make sure that no human communication can ever take place beyond the reach of their surveillance arm, which to me um, is incomparably shocking because it, it renders this extraordinary human innovation, which is the internet, um, into something completely different than what it was promised to be. It was promised to be this tool of liber liberal, uh, liberalization and emancipation and democratization, a tool of equality and empowerment, and to essentially turn it into this limitless um, tool of, of surveillance is to convert it into the opposite, which is the, the most powerful tool of human coercion and control ever known in human history.